What's up, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus? I'm so on fire right now because I just got done praying on my knees for a second, asking Lord Jesus, just, just pouring out my heart to him. I'm going to get it right into it. You right here are on this video for a reason, and it's because the Lord Jesus Christ is about to do something huge. I don't know what it is, but I was on my knees and he whispered to my heart, shaking, 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 and I just got overwhelmed with his presence, and he wants me to speak right now to someone, his remnant, his people, who he is shaking, who he is shaking, this world, the heavens and the earth. And I whispered, or as he whispered the shaking, I looked up and I typed in shaking and Bible verses about shaking. And this is what the Lord showed me right here. Okay. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Acts 4.31 well, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Hebrews 12.26 And I want to speak to my brothers and sisters right now who are going through the fire. He is shaking his people. He is shaking this land. He is shaking America. He is shaking this world with the presence of God for the people who are going to be bold for the kingdom of God. And I don't care how I look to people. I don't care because I care what the Lord sees me to do and I want to be obedient. So I'm going to get in the word with you, my brothers and sisters, right now. Let us be sensitive. I'm going to get into a prayer because God is shaking this world. Lord, I glorify you, almighty creator, master of the universe, Jesus Christ. I pray that you speak through me. I don't want to speak a word unless it's not ordained by the oracles of God. I don't want to say anything that does not align up with the will of God. Lord, we glorify you. As we lift up the name of Jesus, you draw men unto you. And I thank you that you are coming soon. And I thank you that you are shaking this world. And I thank you that you are the king of the universe, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. In Jesus' mighty name, there's a lost and dying world out there, but the Lord is shaking in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so, ooh, I feel the presence of God right now. Let's look what the Lord was uh, wanting me to read in Acts 4.23, and then we're going to go in Hebrews 12. The believers pray for boldness. Can you guys see that? Kind of made this a little bit small, so let me fix this real quick. Lord Jesus, I praise your name. Let's look at Acts, okay? And being let go, this is when the believers were together praying for boldness from the Holy Spirit, okay? We are not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation of those who believe. And there's a lost and dying world out there, but the Lord is shaking up his believers. He is shaking his remnant. So I'm excited. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word, Father. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage? And the people imagined vain things. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. That's when Jesus was alive. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Lord, Holy Child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. I'm speaking to somebody right now who wants to be bold for the Lord. He is shaking this world and this nation in America and all the surrounding countries. There is a shift in the atmosphere that I feel in the Holy Spirit, that I feel in the heavens, that I feel that I cannot contain, that I don't care what I'm going to look like, that I feel that people are going to start marching out into the streets and proclaiming Jesus Christ and coming in unity. I saw a vision when I was in San Antonio with some brothers and, and sisters in Christ that there were were going to be people marching together as the protests were for the heathens. The heathens were mad as Black Lives Matter's protest. There's going to be people marching, I prophesy in Jesus' name, for the Lord Jesus Christ in unity as the fire of God falls in spiritual saying fire. As Holy Ghost, as God himself comes in, in this last push, this last move of God and the, and the sons of obedience and the sons and children and daughters of God who are going to be bold for the kingdom of God because there needs to be 
an awakening. And there's going to be an awakening in the children of God if we stand firm and hold on to Jesus Christ and we abhor that which is evil and we cling to that which is good. Jesus is coming. There is a last great awakening, I believe. And I don't know how huge it's going to be, but I just see people marching together in the cities in unity, laying hands on the sick, raising the dead for the glory of the Lord. Now, there's go the Antichrist is coming. The Lord is speaking to me. He's coming. He's already here. He's here. But there's a last shift in the Lord's mercy and the grace that he is going to show in the remnant that are going to be on fire, that are going to be shaken. And are you a part of this move? Oh, Lord Jesus, I feel your presence. I, I don't get like this often, but I'm not going to hold back. I don't care what people look at me and say I'm crazy because you're right. I'm crazy in love with Jesus Christ. And there needs to be a shaking. There needs to be yeah, people who are going to come together in one mind and one accord like the word of God. We see the words. These words are true. If you are a believer, you will believe these words when they were in one mind and one accord with all boldness. No matter the threatenings, they had played, they had prayed together and the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. That is the truth. And I just, I'm going to leave off in Hebrews 12, okay? Because I'm only going to do what the Lord showed me. I don't want to go overboard into my opinions and am I this, but I feel the Holy Spirit today. So let me go in Hebrews 12 real quick. Jesus, founder and the perfecter of our faith, okay? I want you to know you cannot rely on anything else except Jesus Christ. The gospel, the good news of God is Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And you can never go to heaven. You can never go to the Father but through the door of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, Jesus, God in flesh. Let's look what the Lord says. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. There's a cloud of witnesses, brothers and sisters. There's a cloud of witnesses who are watching. You are watching the race set before you. Are you going to obey the word of the Lord? Are you going to not just hear this word, but are you going to do what the Lord says for us to do? If you love God, you will obey his commandments. That is the truth. That is the truth. And did you receive a love for the truth that you might be saved? In Jesus' name, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. He didn't care about what he was going to look like. I don't care what people look at me and think, wow, he's crazy, because Jesus is alive and he's coming to set fire on the children who love him, a spiritual fire, and set fire on those, literal fire, on those who disobey him. Oh, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. And set down at the right hand of the throne of God, that is the power side of God, the right hand, most people are right-handed, the, it's the, the dominant side of God, if you look in the Greek, it's the right hand, it's the strong side, it is in the spirit realm, it's not a physical location, it is the right hand, the strong side side of God. Do not grow weary, brothers and sisters. This race is almost over. I feel the Lord. The race is almost over, but he is looking. He is separating the people who are going to be of faith or the people who are going to be of the flesh. Are you of flesh? Or are you of faith? Because we need a people of faith in Jesus name. Hebrews 12, 3, for consider him that endureth such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto the blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Guys, don't, don't, don't forsake the correction of the Lord. If he rebukes you, if he chastises you, praise the Lord that you are a son, a daughter of the king. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastising, if ye endure ch correction from the Lord, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastiseth not? You're not a son or child of God if you're not being corrected. But if ye be without chastisement, this, where for all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us for their own pleasure, but if he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Guys, we're made in the image of God. He is holy. If we're not being corrected and to conform to the image of the Son in chastisement, we are not a child of God. Do we understand this? 
For now, no chastising for the present seemeth to be joyous. joyous. See, being corrected doesn't, isn't a joyful thing, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Guys, when I'm chastised by the Lord and I'm brought to my knees, it hurts. But that pain, that godly sorrow bringeth repentance that leads unto salvation. The Lord is serious about salvation. It's not a sugar-coated thing. It is a real thing. It is so real that he had to die for you because he loved you. Oh, he shed his blood. Now wherefore lift up hands which hang down in the feeble knees. Get on your knees, says the Lord, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. These are not the words of Colton Kelly. These are the words of Jesus Christ, the word of God that became flesh. Let's continue looking. We're almost done, brothers and sisters. Looking diligently lest any man fail. <laughs> looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. Can you fail the grace of God? Yes. If you're not looking diligently, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. You may be defiled if you turn away, not looking diligently to the Lord Almighty God. I'm taking this serious. It is so serious. It is so serious, guys. I'm being very, very genuine because the Lord is shaking this world. Lest there be any fornicator or any profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. He was the brother of Jacob. God rejected and hated Esau, but he chose and loved Jacob. Are you an Esau? Are you a Jacob? Are you going to sell your birthright as a child of God that he so paid for the blood of Jesus, for the things of this world, for the meat of this world, for the flesh of this world? Are you going to sell it? No. Do not sell your birthright in Jesus' name. For ye know that, how, that afterward, when he would have had inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He sought after he made that decision to find repentance. But God did not grant him it because he already sold out to the devil. He already sold out to this world. Please, in the name of Jesus, I am pleading with you. Knowing that the word of God says, knowing the terrors of the Lord, we persuade men. Knowing the terrors of the Lord, I persuade you. Get out in Jesus' name of this world. Get out of the flesh. Get on your knees and plead for mercy. Our God is merciful a kingdom that cannot be shaken for ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the vo and the voice of words which voice they had heard and entreated that there would not that should not be spoken them any more wow so when they heard the sound of the trumpet and the voice and the word of god they they they, they, they were like no for they could not endure that which was commanded and if so much as a beast touched the mountain it shall be stoned or thrust with a dart and so terrible was the sight that moses said i exceedingly fear and quake the man of god moses himself who saw the hindsight the glory of god his backside as he was in that cleft rock as he was there and he said lord show me your glory he said if you see my glory if you see me you shall surely die but but I will walk beside you and I will hide you and I will show you my hinder parts. And he wrote Genesis. He wrote so much of the, 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 the Old Testament, Genesis. He, in the beginning, Moses wrote the word of God, but he quaked in fear. Do we not all have a fear of God in this nation? God is a consuming fire. Have fear of him in Jesus' name. But ye are come unto Mount Sion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and unto an innumerable company of angels, to a general assembly in the church of the firstborn, which you are written in heaven, and God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of the sprinkling that speaketh better things than of Abel. How did it speak? How did the blood speak? It says that the blood and the sprinkling of the blood that speaketh better things of that of Abel, because Abel when he was slain, when he was slain by Cain in the beginning, his blood crieth out, it says. The blood of Abel crieth out to the Lord. The blood of Jesus, how much more God? The blood crieth out when he was in the garden of Gethsemane and he was bleeding. The blood of Jesus, when he wept and he said, God, oh, if this you take this cup of suffering ahead of me, out of the way, but not my will, your will be done. That is the seriousness of the gospel, the good news of the gospel, that we have sinned, but that God paid the penalty. But come out of the world, says the Lord. 
In Jesus' mighty name, let us continue. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on the earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also in heaven. The Lord is shaking the earth. The Lord is shaking in heaven. There is a trembling that needs to be brought upon the sons of disobedience and true repentance in Jesus' mighty name. And this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are not shaken as the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken remain. Wherefore are we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved? Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire, says Hebrews 12, 29. Jesus is coming. There's a lost and dying world who think that they know Jesus, but they need repentance from the heart a circumcision of the heart it's not the law we failed the law god paid the law but god did not come to abolish the law but to fulfill out of the love that god gave him if you love god you will fulfill the call of god for your life you may stumble you may fall but get up in the name of jesus the lord when we are weak he is strong the lord is our consuming fire and when we allow and we receive the holy ghost fire because the one to come is greater and he will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Do you have the fire of God? We need the fire of Jesus Christ. I love you, Lord. I love you and I bless in the name of Jesus. Everybody watching this video that they can come to terms with the truth in the blood covenant that you made at the New Testament. That the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus may fall upon their hearts in all truth and love for you, mighty King. God bless you. In Jesus' name.